really cool. We have a couple of alumni in the house today. So I know uh, we've had some people join. Uh, just as a quick reminder, as we're getting started, uh, make sure that when you click on the chat, just adjust to all panelists and attendees. So um, just to get started, my name is Hector Verdugo. I'm the Senior Vice President of Admissions here at Academy of Art University here in San Francisco, California, USA. I know that we generally have students from all over the globe here with us, uh, not even just domestic students, but international students. So thank you so much for spending the evening here with us. We have an exciting event tonight. Uh, we definitely have a lot of star power here tonight. So uh, we're going to have uh, three special guests. We're going to have Maddie Stout, a faculty member for over 10 years, also president of Jam Media, uh, Jam Street Media. We're going to have Steve Cotton, our co-director, as well as Jania Nahiro, our director of School of Communications and Media Technologies here with us tonight. Uh, before we get started, what I wanted to do is just take some time to promote a couple of things. First thing is this, uh, we're gonna have Maddie, who's gonna be primarily the star of the show tonight. Uh, you know, our goal here is to talk a little bit more about podcasting tips. And what we wanna do though, is if anybody's interested in looking at the school, if anybody's just thinking, how do I get started? What are my next steps? I'm putting my email here in the chat for everybody. Uh, the primary point of contact would be to get a hold of me. And what we like to do is just set up one-on-ones to sit down and talk and go over the university. More importantly, though, go over your goals and what it is that they are. And so we want to try to figure out how to help you align an education with what's going to help you to actually get on path for your career. So I can't emphasize that enough. I promise we won't bite. Just send an email through so we can connect with you and we'll take steps afterward if you find yourself curious about the university. Next thing I wanted to do is I want to throw you guys a quick link for a bunch of different events. So if anybody here is, has a good time tonight, or if maybe you're somebody who's coming back for another event, we do tons of different events here at the Academy. We have events primarily every Tuesday that are focused on different topics, uh, but we have events all week long. So if you go to that link, you can check our calendar and feel free to just explore anything that you're willing to you know, come and spend some time with us on. We're happy to have you. Last thing I wanted to direct you at, and please just save the link and get to it later but I really wanted to show you some of the quality of work that our students are putting out there. This is an excellent link called the Spring Show. So I just say click on that link and then make your way over, uh, over to the school here of, um, uh, just make your way over to the School of Communications and Media Technologies and you're gonna see some awesome stuff on there. Some of the best of the best student work that you can find. So, uh, so as we get started here, Last thing I wanted to throw out there is make sure that you're busy in the chat. We want to interact with you. We want this to be a lot of fun. We have so much experience and talent here tonight that's here to guide you and give you some of the best and most honest advice possible. So all I would tell you to do is fire away in the chat. We want to make sure that we take your questions. We'll read them out to you and do the best we can to interact with you and make tonight fun. So to get us started here, I'm going to introduce our director of the School of Communications and Media Technologies. I've had the pleasure of traveling all over the place with this lovely lady. Uh, she's very, very sweet. Uh, so Janet, to hear a little bit about her, she graduated from the uh, Fresno State University with a degree in journalism, news editorial. Jan traveled the world in search of exotic places and fascinating celebrities. She is bungee jump, skydive with the Army's Golden Knights, and climbed a frozen waterfall in Colorado. She has hosted six documentaries on the US government's relocation and redress of 110,000 Japanese Americans during World War II. Jen has won multiple awards, including an Emmy, the Eleanor Roosevelt Humanitarian Award, and the Girl Scouts Woman of Distinction Award. She is a board chair of the Representation Project and holds seats on Christy Yamaguchi's Always Dream Foundation and the Bank of Marin. She is the author of three books. Her latest is It's Not the Life I Ordered, 50 Ways to Keep Your Head Above Water When Life Keeps you dra what Keeps Dragging You Down. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over here to our director, Jenny Anahiro, and uh, pass it off to you. I'll see you all in the chat, everybody. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Hector. Really, it's a pleasure to see, see, I put that in quotes, everybody on the Zoom. This is how we're communicating these days. And Hector is right. Put your questions in the chat. We will answer them as they come up. You know, this is a two-way conversation. We're in communications, everybody, and we want to communicate with you. So I've got a long history in media and communications. I'm humbled to have had that experience in hosting and reporting from around the world. I mean, I never imagined as a young girl growing up in Hawaii, that's Hawaii behind me, my homeland, that I would have a chance to be on television and to do stories internationally from 
France, to Australia, to Japan, to um, Mexico, everywhere. And I'm humbled by my experience because back then in 1975, when I started, on, I wanted to be on television. Nobody who looked like me was being hired. In fact, I was turned down so many times by so many television stations, I've lost count. But the point is you've got to keep going, you've got to persevere, you've got to believe and you will. And you've got to know your skills and you got to go for everything you have. And I worked hard and here we are today. And I got to start this department, the School of Communications and Media Technologies. And one of the people that I worked with back in our day, he was um, a director, a producer, a videographer. He was in the Directors Guild of America. He was that good. He traveled the world a lot with me, a lot with other companies and other shows. And he's the co-director of our department. And I want to introduce quickly Steve Cotton to say a few words, Steve. Oh, thank you, Jan. And thank you everyone uh, for uh, showing up today. Um, this is uh, really, it's, it's good to see all of you and welcome. Uh, Yes, this it's it's a great great uh, day. I mean, evening. We're going to have uh, Maddie Stout, who's uh, one of our instructors here, and he really knows his stuff about audio and podcasting, and that whole world of communications that's on the audio side. And we teach it all here at the media and communications. Whether you want to be in front of the camera or whether you want to be behind the camera, as a producer director or audio producer director. Uh, we teach it all. We have studios. We do all kinds of crazy and wild shows. We're experimenting all the time, even using the new technology with Zoom. But we're always out there in the front leading edge of technology to help you along, to get you a jump start into the professional world of media and communications. So welcome. You're going to have a great time tonight. I'm going to throw it back to Jan so we can get going because this is an exciting event and you're going to love what Maddie has to say. So Jan, take it away. Thanks, Steve. So tonight we decided, Steve and I decided that what is hot and what is going on right now, especially during this pandemic, and it's podcasting. So I would love for you to meet really the guru of podcasting, the instructor who started our department in podcasting and who has really grown the department in podcasting and, and, and so many students have just grabbed on to this podcast. I, I always say that Matty Stout was ahead of his time. He was talking podcasting more than 10 years ago when people were going, what? What's podcasting? But Matty Stout designed our curriculum in podcasting teaches podcasting, teaches advanced podcasting and everything else. And he's going to tell you all about it. But I want to let you in a tiny secret to Maddie Stout. If you were in San Francisco um, in, in the 90s and early 200s, you heard him on radio. He was a top DJ here in San Francisco. And one more thing about Maddie Stout. If you saw the movie Cars, the Pixar movie Cars, you heard his voice. He is Maddie the car in cars. And with that, I'm going to toss it to you, Maddie Stout. Thank you, Jan. And uh, okay, thanks, everybody. That's uh, a lot, a lot of uh, introduction there. So uh, I'm going to, I've got a little presentation that I'm going to do for, for all of you guys on podcasting. And it's going to talk a little bit about the evolution from my career perspective and then just some great tips for you uh, if you are a podcaster or want to be a podcaster or, or anywhere in between. So let's just roll right into it, shall we? Um, okay, so I am sharing my screen. By the way, guys, I have three dogs. So at some point, you'll see my wife trying to corral them right now. We're, we're, uh, they, they don't seem to care that I'm on Zoom, so they just do their thing. All right, uh, Jan, nod your head. Can you guys see my presentation now? Okay, great, thank you. All right, so um, as, as Jan said, uh, my name is Maddie Stout. And, um, you know, I started in this business, like a lot of folks, I started in radio and I started when I was a kid, I was 16 at a little station in West Virginia. And I, I mean, I started doing radio actually in my bedroom when I was 10 years old. I have a tape of me doing a radio show at age 10, uh, trying to, trying to do parody songs. I think I did a parody song of purple rain called acid rain. I was hilarious. Uh, 
but I always wanted to do it. And uh, so when I got s- turned 16, I drove to my local station and I got a job uh, doing whatever. Uh, and eventually they let me on the air and I ended up putting my way through college as a college, uh, not as a college DJ, but as an actual DJ uh, working uh, my way through college. Um, radio was really good to me. I got to do some great shows in New York City and in, in Washington, D.C. and then San Francisco. But about, believe it or not, 14 years ago, I decided that I wanted to quit radio and get into the startup world. And there was this new startup called Stitcher, and it was a podcast startup. Now, I didn't know what a podcast was. Um, I'd come from talk radio. So I, was, I, I knew that that was the medium I wanted to, to continue to do. And this seemed like a really good thing. So in those early days of podcasting, you know, the podcasts were uh, not great. They were hours sometimes. They were usually about Mac and about iPhone stuff, because the only way you could listen to a podcast back then was on iPhone. And uh, uh, and, and, and then we had NPR hit that, that started putting their shows on podcasting. So I helped uh, found Stitcher. Um, I, I kept with podcasting uh, for those early years when it was really not cool to do podcasting. In fact, we didn't even use the word podcast when we talked about it at Stitcher. We called it on-demand radio because the podcast word was bad. It meant you know, guys in their garage with bad microphones talking forever. Um, but eventually it started to catch on. Uh, and then 10 years ago, uh, Jan and Steve asked me if I, if I was interested to come and teach a radio class at the Academy of Art. And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with radio. Uh, I can teach that, but I really think we need to start doing podcasting. So we started our first class then, and we were the first university to, to really embrace it as a class because uh, that same year I started a full podcast production class. So now we have three classes in that, in that world of, of podcasting. Um, and I'll talk to you more about what you learn in those as we, as we move along. Uh, but you know, our school has been very ahead of the game. A few years ago, um, uh, radio got back into, decided to get into podcasting, and I was blessed and fortunate enough to be asked by iHeartRadio to lead up the podcast division. So um, I helped take iHeart from a company that had a few podcasts to, uh, it's now the largest podcast producer in the world, um, and I'm very proud of what we did at iHeart, and, and I've been around a lot of podcasts. I've launched about 300 myself and uh, have EP'd on, on more than I can count, um, and then last year, I decided to... Uh, to do my own thing and start my own company, Jam Street Media, and I'll uh, and that's the company I have now. And I'm proud to say that uh, uh, all of my employees are former students and folks that came out of our program uh, because I know they're really good. So that's who I've got working for me. Um, so let's talk about podcasting. All right. So podcasting, you know, has been around for a while. It is much more popular now than it's ever been. Uh, a couple things have to do with that. One is that. Uh, it's easier to listen to podcasts. You know, anybody that's got a phone has got a podcast app and most people have figured out how to use it. Um, The other thing is that, uh, you know, with COVID, it's been uh, a comfort to people. And I'm going to talk about why people find podcasts comforting, and we'll get into that. But things about podcast listeners that advertisers like is that most of the people that listen are, are higher income. Um, they're, they're usually pretty tech savvy. They're, they're into Netflix and they have their own smart speakers. Um, and podcast ads really work. You know, most people that listen to a podcast don't mind the ads because they're really not intrusive when they're done right. So um, when you advertise on a podcast, it's, it's, it reaches maybe not as big an audience as a television station, but it's very much a quality listener. You know, it's somebody that really cares about the show. And then, you know, and if I, they care about the host and if they care about the host and the host says, hey, um, I just bought a new mattress from Casper, you should check it out. People will go check it out to help the host out. Um, you know, this, 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 as you can see, you know, it just keeps going up year by year by year by year. Um, you know, when people listen to podcasts, that usually becomes their number one form of, of, of audio. Um, you know, most podcast listeners have tended to be, when we started, all the podcast listeners were older. They were middle-aged uh, white guys who liked tech and all kinds of things, and that's who listen to podcasts. And then it became more of a younger, younger uh, audience, millennials. Uh, now it's it's pretty much ubiquitous. You know, it's popular across the way, and now we're kind of getting older folks back into listening. And in fact, um, folks over the age of thirty-five are the biggest increase in listeners that we have in podcasting. Um, and folks that like podcasts like to listen to a lot of podcasts. They listen to about seven a week, and that number I'm going to explain to you later. Um, will help help you understand why 
you know, we talk about why it's good to have a podcast length that is a certain length. Um, you know, when we talk about podcasting, the ideal length is about 40, 45 minutes. Um, and that's through science. You know, we look at metrics and I'm going to talk about what we look at when we talk about metrics, but that's about the length most people want to listen to a show. I, there will always be somebody who will say, well, but Joe Rogan, but Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan is an outlier. <laughs> Joe Rogan does what Joe Rogan does and he can do a two hour podcast. But for you starting one, you should never do anything that's longer than 45 minutes because most people will not listen to the whole thing. All right. So this is my philosophy and why I think podcasts work. There are the three E's. So when someone listens to a podcast, they have three experiences when it's done right. The first one is empathy. Now, what that means is that when I'm listening to a podcast, I feel like I'm hanging out with somebody. Um, you know, if you just think about the process of listening to a podcast, for most of us, it involves wearing headphones and not doing a lot of other stuff. It's, you know, it's really hard to listen and pay attention to a podcast and, 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 and type a letter. You know, it, it really focuses our mind, which uh, in a world where we're always looking at our phones and, you know, me, my wife goes nuts. I watch the TV and look at my phone at the same time. I'm, I, I've, I've got so many screens going, but I'm listening to a podcast. That's my Zen time. That's my happy time. In fact, uh, I, I call it meditation time because I, I, I like to just, just do that. Just sit and listen to a podcast. So when it's done right, we're really creating a, an experience that is being shared with the listener. Um, at the heart of every podcast is education. Um, even a podcast that is two people talking about The Bachelorette, you're still learning something. You're learning about the show that week. You're learning about their insights. You know, there's an education level to every podcast. You know, this is, this is one of the, you know, things I take great pride in being this part of this industry because it is an industry of people that really want to teach and, 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 a, and an industry of listeners who want to learn. And then finally, entertainment. And this is where a lot of people forget. Most people, when they do a podcast, forget that they're not the audience. The audience is who's listening. Um, if I'm doing a podcast and it's me and my buddy talking about our own stuff for two hours, not a lot of people want to listen to that. In fact, nobody wants to listen to that other than, than you and your buddy. Uh, and maybe a friend of yours who will say that they listened, but they really didn't. They're just trying to get you to stop talking about your podcast. But if you listen to a lot of the podcasts out there, this is a factor that a lot of people forget. Really good podcasts are very well produced. And, they're, and they are a very entertaining, um, you know, a, a form of, uh, of audio. So, you know, one of the things we fight a, a lot in our industry is this misconception. Um, there was just an article out that uh, Adam Devine uh, was in the New York Times talking about how easy it is to podcast. Oh, it's, a, it's the easiest thing in the world. You just do it, you put it out. And a lot of us in the business got very upset with it because when we do podcasting right, we have writers, we have sound designers, we have editors. We put a lot of work into a good podcast, months of work. Um, so it isn't, if you're, if you're a famous person and you go in the room and talk, yeah, there's 15 people there doing it for you. And yeah, it is up the next day. So, um, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. So this is what it feels like when you listen to a podcast. You're not really with these people on this board, on this, uh, on this billboard, but you are, you're hanging out with them. Um, that's what it feels like to listen to a podcast. You know, you're, you're in the same room, but you're not, you're having a conversation with people, but you're not, uh, I talk back to the radio in my car and my podcast all the time. Um, that might just be me, but I know a lot of people tell me they do the same thing, but the keys are well-produced audio. And this is something that we really work on a lot in my classes and that, you know, I do a lot of, of podcast, uh, symposiums and consulting, and that's the number one thing that if you put out something that doesn't sound good, nobody will listen to it. And here's the thing about podcasts. You only get one chance to make a good impression. If you're on the radio when you sound bad, people can flip the dial and they'll, they'll come back. Nobody has ever said to me, I'm gonna check that podcast out again in two months and see if they got any better. They don't do that. They just go, that podcast sucked and they don't go back again. So putting out good audio and, and getting it right the first time is really important because people are not forgiving. There are uh, hundreds of thousands of podcasts to listen to. So if they don't like your podcast, they've got plenty to choose from on the other side. The other thing is unique content. Now this is, you know, we, we live, you know, there's an the expression that's the, I don't like the mispronunciation, but it's the, uh, the, re the, the riches are in the niches. It should be the riches are in the niches, but anyway, but 
when you make money in podcasting, it's usually because you've, you've, you've stumbled onto a good, a good niche. You know, you've got something that's unique and that there's a really strong audience for. So podcasts about comic books, comic books, or there's tons of podcasts about that. So what do you do that's even more unique? Well, I'll just talk about one comic book. I'll talk about one television show on every episode. Uh, you know, these are the types of podcasts that do well because they really are focused. And it's something we work on a lot. The other one is consistency. If you start a podcast and you do it once every two weeks or once every three weeks or just whenever you feel like it, you will never, ever grow an audience. Podcast listeners really want consistency. Ideally, they want to hear a new podcast every week. And before you start a podcast, you have to know that this is a job. It is not easy to just, you know, your first one is fun. You're excited. You do it. The 50th is a job. You have, you, it is something you have to do every week. You have to prepare your content. You have to book a guest. It's a lot of work to maintain a podcast on a weekly basis. Um, it's something that, you know, those of us coming from media, we get, you know, we, you know, I'm used to, I did morning talk shows and I the biggest compliment I would get is when somebody said, Hey, I, I feel like I could come do your job. And I think, yeah, you could probably come do it for a day. Uh, but talk to me in two weeks and see if you want to get up at three in the morning and, and put together four hours of content. But, and it's the same with a podcast. A lot of people were like, oh, this is so easy. I'll just go do it. And then, you know, four weeks later, uh, we call it pod fade. They just kind of fade off. They just quit doing it because they're not seeing the numbers and all the things that they want. So before you record, the, the, you need to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Is it for fun? Do I want to make money from this? Um, is this a message I feel like I need to get out? That's, you need to know that before you start and you need to pick a topic that you're passionate about. Um, picking a topic based on, oh, you know, I think people need to hear a podcast about this. It's not going to work. Um, there was a study done at New York University and they told a lie with audio, video and writing. You know, the one place that people found the lie the most was audio. Audio is a very truth telling medium. Um, your voice says a lot. And it says whether you're interested in doing things or not. You know, I had a program director once who told me that um, he could hear me smile when I, when I talked on the radio and that he said the listeners could. And he would know when I was in a bad mood. He would come in and say, hey, you wear your heart on your sleeve when you talk on the radio. And I, and I think that was maybe why I, I kept getting jobs because I think people like that. And it's the same with podcasting. So, you know, you've got to be into what you're doing. The next is picking a format. The one format that everybody does is me and somebody else chit-chatting and having a guest. And that's great. And, and that's good, you know, but that is probably not going to be a, a podcast that is going to have a lot of staying power as far as getting a lot of listeners. Storytelling is the most popular for really hardcore listeners. And for companies like mine, we do storytelling podcasts, but they are a lot of labor. They involve writing and sound designing. And, uh, and, 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 and doing story arcs. And I mean, it is a lot of work to do a good storytelling podcast, but when they're done right, they're so good. Um, if any of you ever get a chance to listen to the podcast S town, to me, that is like one of the most perfect storytelling podcasts ever. Um, fiction is another one that a lot of people are getting into. Um, and a lot of the companies here, and I live in LA and a lot of, a lot of the folks in the business here are, are getting into the podcasting space because they can try out ideas for TV and movies through podcasting. It's a lot cheaper. In fact, somebody told me the other day for the amount it costs for them to have somebody write a script, they can do a full season of a, of a, of a, of a podcast, you know? Uh, so fiction is very popular. It's still, it's, it's still, it's popular to be done. It's still not the most popular to listen to people are um, it's really hard to do right. You know, it's just like trying to be funny. Some people really aren't funny. And they, but they think they are, and they, they do a, a comedy podcast and it doesn't work out for them. Uh, you have to be good at this. So uh, fiction is something that is very hard to do right. Um, and then, you know, finding podcasts that you like, listening to them and saying, what can I do better? Or what did they do that I like that I can incorporate into mine? Um, I am always flummoxed when somebody takes a podcasting class and tells me they, they don't listen to podcasts. I'm like, well, you need to start. In fact, the first week of my class, I make everybody go listen to a bunch of podcasts and write, write reviews of them. Um, you can't do it anything that you don't, you can't be a maker of anything that you don't consume. You, at least do it well. You know, it's just like if I decided I want to be a baker and I've never eaten cake. 
or I don't like sugar, or, you know, that, that doesn't, it's not going to work out probably for you. Um, so you really need to consume a lot of media in order to produce great media, you know, and that's something that a lot of folks won't do. And then it's a matter of, you know, uh, picking a name and a mission statement. And a mission statement is simply this. It's one sentence that tells everybody what your show is about. Very often I'll go to ask somebody what their podcast is about and they will talk to me for two minutes about the podcast and I still don't quite understand what they want to do. Have a mission statement. I always say, you know, I treat podcasts like I do a startup and I've worked a lot in the startup world. So you've got to have your elevator pitch. And it's the same thing with the podcast. You have to have a really good elevator pitch because you are going to be pitching the podcast to potential guests, to potential sponsors, to a network if you want to join them. Um, and, 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 and by the way, all the folks who can't explain their podcast, their podcasts usually aren't very good. Because <laughs> if they don't know what they're doing, uh, if they can't explain it, then it's hard to do it. Um, the other thing that's really good about having a mission statement is then you can ask yourself, does this fit into my mission statement? So I had a podcast called Access Podcast, and it was the podcast about podcasts. Real simple. That's what the podcast was about. So let's say I had a guest that wanted to come on who was a very famous Hollywood actor and he didn't have a podcast. Guess what? I turned him down because that's not what my show is. My show is about podcasts. So I want to talk to people that have podcasts. So having that ready to go is really important. All right. So now we're at the, the recording phase and people will ask like, what equipment do you use? You know, we use Adobe Audition at the school. It's, it's a program you get for free for working or for being a student here. Um, and it's also an industry standard, um, you know, depending on, you know, my sound designers, maybe they would prefer, they use Pro Tools. Um, it just depends on what kind of podcasting you're doing and what you're comfortable with. Um, but for your normal everyday podcaster, you know, anything is fine that you can cut and edit audio with. So GarageBand is fine, but Adobe Audition is just wonderful to use. And there's so many good tutorials that you can find on it. Um, have a plan for every show. A plan is not, hey, let's meet at two o'clock and get in front of the microphones and start talking. That's not a plan. A plan is, Here's a rundown of what we're going to talk about. We're going to get from here to there and do that in this podcast. So if you're doing a podcast with a friend, it's knowing, hey, I'm going to talk about X subject. What is your view on that? So that I know that we're not just agreeing with each other the whole time, you know, that we have some kind of back and forth to go. Um, I do a sports podcast. So um, my co-host is a former NFL player. So we have our roles very well defined. I am not a former NFL player. Uh, we went to college together. So I come from the fan perspective. So everything I ask or do in the podcast is from the fan perspective. And he's coming from being an elite athlete and he brings that to the table. So um, having roles defined and, and who's doing what on a show is really important. Um, editing. I have had so many students and people tell me, oh, I don't want to edit my podcast too much because I don't want it to sound uh, like, it's, like it, it's not natural. Listen. Nobody wants to hear your ums, your ahs, your <clears throat> all that. Nobody wants to hear that. When I'm listening on headphones and I hear an unedited podcast, I have to, I, I have to stop. It's just painful to listen to. Everybody edits. And, and you can, and when you're good at editing, people don't know you edited it. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm very, believe it or not, I've done this since I was 16. And I am an um guy I, um, uh, uh, all the time. My poor editor cuts out four minutes of ums and ahs between my, my co-host and I every episode. Four minutes of it. Maybe not that much, but it's, it's a lot sometimes. Uh, so that's important to, to be able to do that. And, and, and I'm going to talk to you later about how all of these skills that you might learn doing your own podcast will actually turn into jobs because there's a lot of jobs in podcasting right now. The next is picking music. Number one, you can't use anything copywritten. You will get flags. You will have your stuff pulled. Um, you know, finding free music online is pretty easy. You can also pay, you know, if this is a podcast that you're serious about, spend 10 bucks and buy something, you know, get some music for your podcast. Even if you know the musician, if they're assigned, like I've had, I, I worked in, you know, of course in radio and we would know artists who were famous artists. And you're like, hey, you can use that song for your podcast. Guess what? I can't use that song in my podcast because they don't actually own it. It's owned by a record label or BMI or all these other things. So don't take any chances. Make sure that the music you have is, is original, it's yours, and it's not coming from anywhere else because you do not want to go back and take down 50. I had to take down somebody's podcast at iHeart. They had 200 episodes that we had to take down because they had not used the right music in it. 200 episodes. So do your music right. 
All right. Practice, 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 practice. Nobody is good at any of this stuff the first time. We all suck. Everybody. I don't know one person who has ever done anything in this field, a creative field that was good the first time. You have to you know, do a lot of work to get good. That's just a fact of anything in the creative side. And the people that don't do well are the people who quit. So you have to be okay with knowing, you know, that, you know, you have very good taste. And this is something Ira Glass talks about. Um, you can have really good taste and listen to really good podcasts. And then you do your first podcast and you go, oh, mine does not sound like those podcasts I like. Well, of course it doesn't because the ones you like, they've been working on it for years sometimes. So just know that you will catch up to your taste level, but it's not going to happen overnight. And you've really got to work hard at it and put time and effort into it. Podcasts are fun and easy, but if you want to be serious about them, it's an art form, just like any other art form. And you've got to practice, 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 practice. And, and it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about not putting out bad audio the first time. So do a few shows before you decide to publish something, you know, get, get through the, the bad stuff. Cause usually your third or fourth episode will sound a heck of a lot better than the first one you recorded. So even when we do professional podcasts, I will usually not put the first episode out we did in the series. I'll usually wait till we've done three or four and then start the series with one of those because they normally will be better. All right. Publish. Now, before, before you continue, we've got some questions from Jesus and other people about you mentioned good audio, but we can see your microphone. You believe in a good microphone. You believe in, you know, audition and pro tools. So those are the questions they want to answer. So before you move on to publishing, can you give some quick tips on having a good microphone uh, audition, all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So microphones are really up to you. Um, I like to use this. It's called a condenser microphone. Um, and the reason I like this microphone is it doesn't pick up a lot of outside stuff. And I tend to be more of a, a directional loud talker. Um, there's dynamic microphones that, that are sound great as well, but they're more tricky. You, you don't have as much leeway. You have to be pretty precise on where you sit on those. With these, you can move around a little bit and they're okay. Um, there are lots of brands. If you're serious about podcasting, don't cheap out. Um, I'll tell you, there are a couple great groups on Facebook. One of them is the Podcast Movement Group. Um, that has been formed by folks that go to Podcast Movement every year, which is kind of our Super Bowl of podcasting. And there are so many people on there that will help you out if you want, if you've got an equipment issue. Like if you bought something and you want to know why it's not working right, somebody will have an answer for you. Um, we use these mics, they're Audio Techniques uh, AT2020s. I love this mic. I've been using this mic for many years, but there are a lot of good microphones out there. But finding one that you sound good in, you're comfortable in is really important. And, and for the audio editing, Again, it's really what you're comfortable with. Um, I, I like to use, one of the other reasons I really like to use Adobe Edition is because they do have so many tutorials online. So that, you know, if you're home alone and you can't figure something out, it takes you five seconds to go on YouTube and find it exactly what you're looking for and, and get somebody to do your tutorial for you. So um, that's really important. Um, but joining a lot of podcast groups and being involved in the community is, is great. And it's one of the things that we do different than in podcasting. Podcasting is an industry where we do not, we're not cutthroat. I am friends with everybody who runs a podcast company in the country. Uh, we know each other. We help each other out. It is rare in media. Radio is not like that. It's super cutthroat. Whoever is on the other side of town at another station, you don't help them. You don't like them. You don't want anything to do with them. Podcasting is a lot different in that respect. I hope it stays that way. But right now, it's still a very cool community where people can talk to each other and help each other out. And Maddie, you mentioned music. There's a question um, here about if you're if you're not signed, but you can use your own music. Oh, correct? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And I think that's usually the smartest bet. Um, you know, we have um, one of our, you know, our sound designers came from the university here um, and 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 she makes her own music. So that works out perfect for our stuff. Um, that's what we like to do is use our own music. Yeah. Hey, Maddie. Uh, hey, Zeus out there has been asking about recorders. Are recorders necessary? If you're going to be out doing audio in the field, um, having a good Zoom recorder will be very helpful because you'll get really good audio from that. Um, but I'll tell you what works really good is this, an iPhone. These little microphones on iPhones are tremendous, tremendous. But you need to practice. You need to make sure you're at the right distance and watch out for wind, test back, listen back to what you've recorded. Um, I always do test audio when I go anywhere. 
uh, because I have been burnt. I have gone somewhere and recorded audio and didn't check it and got home and it was unusable. Or uh, one time when I was interviewing a, a very famous director, I showed up and I didn't have batteries uh, in my recorder. And I had to pretend to do an interview for 30 minutes because I didn't want to admit to him that I not brought batteries. <laughs> so always test your equipment is what I'm saying. Okay. One last question before you move on. Um, Colleen wants to know, you mentioned the podcast movement group, Maddie. Mm -hmm. So yeah, on Facebook, there's a group called podcast movement and, and it's, 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 it's a great group hundreds of people on there from all kinds of people from, you know, you know, me, who's, you know, a professional uh, podcaster to, you know, everyday folks who are just doing it for fun. Uh, but it's a really good group to go on and ask questions. If you, if you've got stuff like that, um, Podfest has another group on there. Um, I'm speaking at that this March and that's another really uh, neat group of podcasters and they're mostly independent podcasters and, and I like the independent podcasters. So that's another great group. Um, so publishing. So most of you who uh, don't know about podcasting probably don't know what an RSS feed is. RSS stands for really simple syndication. And what it just means is that your podcast can be sent out to a whole bunch of places from one spot. So an RSS feed provider like Simplecast, Acast, Anchor, what you do there is you put your audio there, you put your artwork, you put your show description, um, which by the way, uh, I, I didn't mention that, but show descriptions are very important. SEO is really important in podcasting. There's a ton of technical stuff I could go down the road of. But a good RSS feed provider will also give you the ability to set up monetization. So if you want to put ads into your podcast, you know, using one of those like Simplecast or, or Acast is really good for the, the novice if, if you're just, you just want to put, have them put ads in for you. Um, Picking out a good one is that's another thing where you want to do your homework and check out and see which one's best for you. You know, we use a couple different ones for our different shows. Um, the other thing is your podcast art. If you see the podcast art here, it's all really easy to read. It's big, it's bold. It's, you can see it on a thumbnail. Um, unless you're somebody famous, putting a picture of yourself on there is not going to help out. It's, it, First of all, nobody can see it on the phone. And second of all, it's not going to help out too much. Um, with the two podcasts that you see here where there are faces on them, the one is done by Joe Pistone, who is the real Donnie Brasco, and the other is Ross Stripling, who is a LA Dodger. So yeah, they, they put their pictures on things. But for the most part, don't do that. Just make sure your podcast art is easy to see. Um, and then what these... RSS feed providers will do is then send it out to all of the platforms and make sure your podcast is on every platform, Spotify, iHeart, iTunes, um, CastBox, any place that there's podcasts, make sure it's there because you don't want to lose any audience. I always tell people, if you're, a, if you bake awesome bread, you don't want to just sell it at one supermarket. You'd like to have it in all the supermarkets if you could. So the same thing with your podcast. Make sure that it's available to anybody who wants to. And people are very picky about where they listen to your podcast. You know, not everyone listens to Spotify. Not everyone listens to iTunes. So uh, making sure that it's spread out on all of the platforms is great. And what the RSS feed provider does is it takes all the information and brings it back down so you can see how many people are listening on all the places. And it's in all in one spot. It's, it's, uh, it's great. Um, and this is where we talk about metrics. And I'll just talk about metrics just for a minute. Um, you know, one thing that we look at more than how many people have listened is how long they've listened. So with a lot of these platforms, you can see what your consumption rate is. So that means are people listening to 70%, 80%, 90%, 100% of your podcast? Very few podcasts get to 100%. Our Donnie Brasco podcast is one of the weird, like, it's not weird. It's a really good show and it's very entertaining. And it has almost, it has between a 90 and hundred percent listen through rate. Our, our other podcasts usually are in the 70 to 80 range. And that's about right. Cause you know, you're not going to get everybody to listen to the whole podcast, but I use those to tell how really well people like them and whether the content's working. So if I look at a podcast and it's only getting 50%, then I know I'm doing something wrong. Either it's too long or we're doing something in the middle that people don't like, but something's happening that people are quit listening at, at 50%. So um, that's why it's really, you know, metrics are really important. Um, one thing I tell all of my students and anybody I know is that 
if you're going to get into podcasting, you should take a marketing class and you should take a digital marketing class because if you're going to have a podcast, you need to know how to market it. You need to know how to do social media and digital marketing because you need to promote it every single day. I wish we could just make podcasts and put them up and not have to do anything else. That would be great, but that is not the way it is. We, all of our podcasts, we have seven, eight, nine posts a day going out about the show and, and different platforms and, and finding diff- ways to find listeners. So um, it's something important to learn about. And that's a, that's a almost a whole, that's another conversation <laughs> for a whole other thing. Uh, but that's the other kind of stuff you can find really good help with in some of these podcast groups. Um, so growing your audience, so that, that's a good segue into this. So again, being active on social media and finding where your listeners are. So for each one of our podcasts, we know there's a platform that it's more popular. For my Donnie Brasco podcast, the, the, the audience is older and they're all on Facebook, 100%. Like we have, all of our fans are on Facebook. You know, we get some on Twitter, hardly any on Instagram. So just because you like a platform and you use it a lot, that doesn't mean that's what your listeners will. So making sure you understand who they are and where they live, and then that's how you promote your podcast to them. And again, it's a seven day a week job promoting a podcast. You need to be active constantly. You need to talk to fans. You need to get feedback. You need to interact with them. It's just like anything else with social media. When you're building your social media audience, you have to have engagement and building engagement is, is how you will build engagement to your podcast. You know, we used to say in radio, when I put, when you put somebody on the radio, they're your fan forever. And it's the same thing on social. If you're a podcaster and you respond to a fan, they're going to love you forever. You know, that you've got a listener right there for a long time. So being active is very important. And a lot of folks don't do this. They just, they put up their podcast and then they complain that nobody's listening. Well, nobody knows about it. You have to tell people about it. So one of the things we do is we'll find Reddit groups that are, you know, for just for example, for my podcast, it's about Donnie Brasco. We found Reddit groups where people talk about mob movies and talked about the podcast in those groups. And it, it helped. We saw, we could see, Listeners jump up when we do that. So we know to go find those people in those places. If you have guests, um, having guests that have podcasts, you can cross pollinate your audiences. The other thing is guesting on other podcasts as much as you can. Um, I, I guessed, I go on a lot of podcasts that are smaller because hey, it's another place for me to promote what I do. Um, but Finding podcasts that are similar to yours and cross-pollinating the audiences is the most easy, it's the easiest way and the most natural way to promote and, and, and grow your audience. So um, being very active in the community and knowing, you know, who else is doing podcasts like yours and trying to get on those shows and, and being okay with going on podcasts that don't have a lot of listeners to start because you need to hone your craft as a guest as well. Even if you're a good host, that doesn't mean you're a good guest. And, you know, they're two different skill sets. Um, for, for those of us who do this for a, for a living, spending money is something that you have to do. You have to be able to spend some money on social media campaigns. You know, we, we've got it down to where we don't do a lot of that because we're a startup and we don't have a lot of money. Uh, but if I had more, I would spend more on, 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 on promotion because there are so many podcasts out there and, and getting above the fray to a point where, you know, you're going to make money from listeners is, is tough. And, and the amount of listeners you have to have to make make a, make money is a lot. Uh, I don't want to scare anybody off, but you know you're in the tens of thousands per episode when before you really start making any money on on a podcast. Um, that's not saying you can't do it with less listeners. You can through sponsorships and different things, but through traditional advertising you have to. So we, you know we have to exhaust everything we can to do that. Um, the main thing too is just not being discouraged. I tell people to never look at their numbers too much their first 20 episodes because they're probably going to get discouraged because it takes a while to grow these things. You know, very few, unless you're a celebrity, your podcast is not going to come out of the gates with a hundred thousand listeners. It's just not going to happen. Um, but you have to be diligent about it. And again, this is something, it's a labor of love. It really has to be, you know, for most people, it's not something to jump into unless you're really serious about it and ready to devote the time and energy to do it right. Maddie, um, from Josh Witt, he says, is there a best practice when asking to be a guest on someone else's podcast? You mentioned about going on other people's podcasts. Sure. So, you know, it's the same thing about having your pitch. So knowing what you, what you have to offer them to talk about, telling them that, 
and doing it in a concise way. When I get a pitch email and it's more than three paragraphs or two paragraphs, I probably won't even read it. Um, having a concise pitch. Hi, I'm Maddie. I'm an expert in podcasting. I listen to your podcast. Tell people you listen to their podcast. I really liked your episode on so-and-so. That way they know you really did listen. And I think I can come on and talk about this with you. I think it'd be really fun for us. And we could cross pollinate our audiences. That's simple. Just that, you know, keep it simple. Know what you want to, and you know, know what you have to offer. Know, know their show. You know, the worst is when I get guest pitches and I, I can, I know they've never listened to the show at all because they would know we don't have guests on this podcast. You know, <laughs> you know, we have, you know, one of our, Donnie Brasco, we don't have guests on that podcast. It's it. And, and we'll get a, a pitch and somebody's like, Hey, we love the podcast. We think we'd be a great guest. I'm like, okay, you don't love the podcast because you know, we don't do guests. So get to know the podcast. So jobs. Yes. Doing your own podcast is probably the least way to make money in podcasting. The best way is to get really good at editing and engineering your own podcast and then getting a job doing it. There, This week alone, I've been beating the bushes to find uh, an experienced storytelling uh, NPR uh, type pod, uh, producer for a, a project I have. Um, they're hard to find. Producers that know how to do sound design and editing are so hot. Um, we had a student, uh, I had a student who graduated. She came to work for me for nine months uh, and then was immediately uh, sucked up by another company uh, uh, because she was, she, she just had this skill set that's just, again, being able to do sound design and editing, it is, there are jobs galore out there for podcast editors and sound designers. I mean, all over the place. Um, executive producers, uh, you know, being able to put together a whole podcast, knowing how to book guests and, and, and work with talent, um, writers, um, if you're a writer, you know, all the great podcasts, we need writers. You know, what I look for are people that wear several hats, people that have experience sound designing and writing and editing, you know, that's, that's the golden goose for me. You know, that's, that's what I look for. Uh, and then social media. Um, again, we have uh, a student who came through our comm program, uh, Vanessa, and she does all the social media for us because it's not just doing posting and things. It's also creating uh, elements for that, which are things that we call headliners when it's a little piece of the podcast. And uh, you've probably seen them with the scrolling script at the bottom. Uh, but those are something that take time to make and picking the right parts for that. There's a real skill involved with that. Um, you know, there's, there's, these jobs are, are out there and always available for, for people that are good at what they do. Um, if you don't have any experience, they're a little harder to get the, in the door but this is where you have to do internships or, you know, find a podcast that you like and offer to help work on it. Uh, there are many ways to get into this. This is the, this is a, the, there is, there are definitely more jobs uh, uh, out there than there are people to fill them in podcasting right now. And I could never say that two years ago, certainly not three or four years ago, but now there are lots of them. So most likely if you're, if you want to make podcasting a career, You'll work for other people so that you can fund your own project. I do that. I do, you know, our company, we do podcasts for co for corporations and things that um, aren't the most fun, The uh, that's but they pay the bills so that we can do the fun stuff uh, and fund the projects I want to do. So, you know, there's a little give and take there. Um, so, you know, getting good at doing your own podcast can pay off in a lot of ways. Hey, speaking of payoff, uh, Maddie, Jesus Hernandez wants to know, What's the pay range for a podcast editor? It really, I, I, that's, it, it ranges all over the place. Uh, uh, from, you know, anywhere from $50 an hour to, you know, $250 an hour. If you're a sound designer, an engineer, um, it's kind of all over. Uh, the one thing that's good about this industry is it is, it is, it is starting to be more defined. So the bigger companies are paying uh, top dollar. Uh, for producers where they weren't before. Um, so there is more money to be made. Uh, but the good thing about podcast editing is you can always put out your own shingle and do it. Your, you have your own company and, and charge your own rates. Uh, a lot of people are doing that. Um, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of need for it out there because a lot of people start podcasts, but they don't want to do all the work of editing and doing the sound and all of those things. All right, so I'm going to play for you, you, you guys, some some samples, and these are from students that have been through our program. Uh, the first one is 
An example of what I was talking about was storytelling with sound design. So Camille was a sound design major. Um, she was a young lady I told you about that, that uh, went from the school to working for me to working now for this cool company called Rebel Girls, which does fiction podcasts for, for young women. I, I absolutely love where she's at now. Um, and this was after just two semesters of, of being in my classes. So you'll hear how rich and deep the sound design is. Um, using sound to tell a story along with the voiceover. So this involves writing, this involves sound designing, this involves editing this kind of podcast. So um, I'll play this for you now. Day. He's been practicing every riff, every chord, and that daunting solo on her six string guitar for months just for this day. A shred or you might as well be dead town show being held at her high school for the whole town to come and see. Our hero has been plucking the strings of a guitar since birth. The doctors couldn't explain it. A baby with so much dexterity in their hands from the jump. She fit right into her world though, where rock music is the air everyone breathes. Office jobs were music studios. Gyms were professional music lessons. And every grocery store carried packs of guitar picks and drumsticks. They didn't discriminate. It was the way of their world. She was currently rushing down the street to catch her bus because she stayed up late and was running behind. Within earshot, she could hear a struggle occurring down an alleyway, not too far from the bus stop. When she turned the corner to get eyes on the commotion, she was met with the scene of a menacing crime and ready for the police to take over hostage negotiations. So you can hear effort that goes into a podcast like that. Layers of sound, uh, writing, uh, voiceover. Um, and, 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 you know, that's, that's a really hot commodity. If you can make a podcast like that, you're, you're going to find a job very easily. Um, sports. Uh, we have a lot of students come through that want to do sports and I always tell them, great, you're not ESPN. So what are you going to do to make your sports show different? So this was one of my students, Alex, Lockett. Uh, and Alex did a, a show just dedicated to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, again, this is a student who had, you know, two semesters of class. And uh, you'll get an idea of like how this is a little different. This is a little more commercial sounding. But again, uh, it's still very well produced. And it's perfect for the target audience, which is what we're going for. Kansas City, here they come. Tomahawk. Chiefs Kingdom, welcome to the show that bleeds red and yellow. This is the Tomahawk with your host, Alex Lockett. Chiefs Kingdom, welcome back to the Tomahawk. I'm your host, Alex Lockett, and I've got one hell of a show for you guys today. First up, we're going to recap the SmackDown that took place in Tampa Bay, followed by an interview with a lifelong Chiefs fan and Kansas City, Missouri native, Jim Collin. Next, we'll talk about our upcoming battle with the Broncos, then jump into everyone's favorite game here at the Tomahawk, Cheaper Chomp. And finally, we're going to take a look around the NFL. There's been a lot more COVID shenanigans going on lately, but also some pretty uplifting stuff. We've got a lot to talk about today and not a whole lot of time to do it in. So strap in, because we're going to get this thing rolling. So that podcast also points that I have for you that are podcasters. Do you notice that in one minute, you heard everything that's going to be on the show? So that as a listener, I know right away, okay, this show is about the Chiefs. He's going to talk about the last game. He's going to talk about what's going on in the NFL. He's going to play that cool game I really like. All of that in the first minute. So, you know, I do article, I have, I have an article that I, I've written that's been very popular and it's, and it's all just about the first 60 seconds of a podcast. It is the most important time because that's when people decide if they want to listen or not. So if you spend your first 60 seconds hemming and hawing about going to the store yesterday, excuse me, if I'm a new listener, I am not going to care. Uh, a new listener just wants to know what the show is about and what's going to be on the show. Later on, you can talk about your, your trip to the store, but they don't want to hear that at first. Before you play the next one, Maddie, Lee uh, Vidmar wants to know about where does the music come from? 
and story blocks he's asking um i don't know what you mean by story blocks but with the music uh for the first uh podcast that you listen to uh camille made her own music um for the second one um there are a lot of free music directories online and i believe alex just pulled from one of those so um you know again those are the kind of things like you'll get 50 people give you 50 answers on where to find music and 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 what to use on that um um so finally, this last one is uh, a podcast that was done as a as a as part of a, a bigger series. So this was from Paxton. She was one of our grad students, and she was doing a a YouTube series on 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 Steam, which she'll explain what that is for you uh, on her podcast. And this was a companion podcast. So this is a podcast she did for kids. So you'll notice that the tone's a little different, the music's a little different, and her delivery's a little different. But uh, check it out. <laughs> Welcome to the Centrifuge. I'm Paxton, and we're spinning up science wherever you are. Here on the Centrifuge, we're breaking down topics with STEAM, or science, technology, engineering, art, and math. This week, it's all about the International Space Station. Did you know that the space station has been continuously lived on for 20 years? That's right, astronauts have been living and working aboard the ISS since November of 2000. We'll be talking about growing crystals in space, how the station recycles and purifies water, the international docking adapter, and why it's important to the privatized space industry, space station designs, and why the ISS travels so fast. 17,500 miles per hour fast. This week's episode also features guest Lindsay Noe, a Rocket City resident who loves science in the media. But first, it's time for this week's Science in the News. So with all of those examples, you hear very good sound quality. Um, they're very specific about their content. They're unique. Um, you understand what the show is about right away. Um, these are all things that make really good podcasts. And, and if you listen to a lot of podcasts, now that you know this, you're going to listen to them and go, oh, boy, they are really not doing this first minute right. Um, so that, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff that we really focus in on in, in my classes. Um, and oops, sorry. Uh, uh, they're all starting at once. Okay. Uh, sorry. Ah, there we go. Thank you. All right. So, uh, so speaking of classes, so there are three classes that, that I, I teach at, at, at the school and they're all comm classes, but they're also uh, liberal arts. So it doesn't matter what department you're in. A lot of our students come from sound design and from music. A lot of fashion journalism students come to take podcasting classes. Uh, as most of you know, podcasts are a great way to promote lots of things. Um, I make podcasts for brands. Um, so, you know, we make podcasts that help brands promote their their lifestyle um you know i'm working on one right now for away luggage um and it's a travel podcast believe it or not you know for for a luggage company um so la uh, you can take it the one our first class is 150 which is uh an introduction to radio and podcasting so we talk about radio and we learn some radio elements that 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 will make you a better podcaster because there's a lot of things that, that come from radio that, that can make your podcast better. And then the second one is the, is the podcast production and promotion class. So that's a, that's a class where you work on one show all semester and then publish it uh, at the end of the semester um, and hopefully continue to do it. Uh, and then the last one is uh, uh, our media station management class, which is basically working at our campus radio station, which I also run. Uh, we do podcasting on, we put podcasts on the radio there. Uh, it's also where a lot of the folks that have gone on to work in social media have come from because we have very active social media. So if you follow, um, if you look at uh, Urban Nights Radio on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you'll see uh, that we're quite active on there promoting what we do. Uh, and it's a great way for our students to practice the skills that they've learned in the other classes as a job. So we treat that class as a job. The first day I talk to my students, I say, welcome to work, because you're going to work all semester at the radio station. So 
thanks for listening to me all this time. I, I think I'd be really bored with if I had to listen to myself talk this much, but uh, there you go. Hey, I'd love to ask, uh, we've been trying to answer as many questions as we possibly can while Maddie was talking, but if you have any other questions for Maddie, you know, we're here, we'd love to answer your questions. Um, I just posted, um, it is urbanizeradio.com and we're on 24 seven. Maddie is the general manager. He started the radio station, he's the general manager, but he has students it's all student work on the station. So Maddie, maybe you can talk, talk a little bit about uh, the student work on the college radio station. And, yeah, I mean, the, the student is how run- how popular we are too. Uh, the, student is, the student station is a student station. So uh, you don't have to listen to the, my crappy music. It's the music that you like. Uh, there are, every, every hour is almost a different format because we let students do what they wanna do on the station. So we have country shows, we've got reggae shows, we've got you know a lot of hip hop shows. Um, so that's and it's open to people at the university. Um, the The station is was one of the first college radio stations to uh, ever be put on iHeartRadio, and it is currently one of the top stations on iHeartRadio. So if you ask Alexa to play Urban Nights mm -hmm. Radio, which I just did, it will play Urban Nights Radio for you. Hopefully, it's not going to do it now. Uh, but uh, that's the simple. So if you have an Alexa, you can just tell it to play Urban Nights Radio and you can listen to the station. Yes, you can say, I'll say it quietly because Maddie, your Alexa will just, it is Alexa, please play Urban Nights Radio and Alexa will play the radio station. Interestingly, when Maddie started our radio station, it's a student run new, uh, radio station. We found listeners, Maddie, in Germany, actually all over the world. So you can get this radio station from all over the world. Tell us about that, Maddie. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The station's uh, always done very well uh, all over the place. Uh, we have more listeners outside of San Francisco than San Francisco by far. Uh, but it is. Uh, I think it's. I think people like to listen to radio stations that are college stations because they're they're they don't sound like regular radio you don't hear the same five songs over and over again we don't play commercials uh so if you just want to kick back while you're relaxing and studying you can put the station on and it's just going to go in the background and and give you some good music and you can get the radio station urban nights radio on your phone on, on your uh computer if you just go to the iheart radio app then search urban nights radio and there you are yep that's it or you can listen to it on your computer, urbanizeradio.com. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, any questions? Um, and Maddie, any other thoughts for students? Um, I just want to make sure that students understand that um, we have podcasting 150, podcasting 250, and, and COM 351. But all those classes, if you're at the university or if you want to come to the university, please do. But if you want to take Maddie's classes, they're all, they also count as liberal arts classes. So they can count as a communications class or it will count as a liberal arts class. So you can be in other departments and still take the class as a liberal arts class. So we just wanna make that really clear. And, and, and we really worked hard to have that, that it could be just both a liberal arts class or a comm class. Okay. Yeah. Um, other questions that you may have or other maybe, Maddie, some, um, maybe some thoughts about, you know, how people should get started. You mentioned internships and you offer internships and Sirius XM radio too. So tell them about internships. Um, you know, that's the best way to get into anything is, is through an internship, because um, if you've worked for me as an intern, you're going to be the first person I look to to hire because you've shown me that you can work um, and, and do a good job. So uh, currently, I think all of my in all of my interns have become employees at this point. You know, it's a new company, uh, but uh, that's my first place to go higher is through internships. So finding them, you know, and finding them at podcasting might not be as easy. You know, the bigger companies might offer them. Spotify and iHeart aren't really great with internships, but you can you can look for them there. Um, but you know, finding a podcast that you really like and seeing if they'll, they'll let you do an internship for their podcast. Uh, a lot of, a lot of podcasters will do that. 
Um, but again, I think really the best way in this industry, is, the good thing about this industry is that you have everything at your fingertips to start your own and to, to work and get good at this on your own um, so that you have something to offer when you go to an internship. Okay. Um, other questions, please. And Steve, if you'd like to add anything about um, our program or about podcasting, please do. Well, I, I think we have a terrific program. And what I also particularly like is the radio management class because it gives them a real world example of what the, the professional world is like out there in terms of running your own radio station and programming a radio station for audiences to listen to. And that's what it's about. It's about storytelling. That's what our whole department is about, storytelling. And th podcasting is beautiful storytelling of the mind. It's, it's just wonderful, wonderful way to layer sound effects and voice and writing together to make these incredible images in your mind. And I think that's the attraction of radio. I've always been a huge, huge fan of radio. And you do also in, in your department radio theater, don't you, Maddie? You do, you do uh, uh, some modules in, in some of those classes where you actually do radio performances, which are just amazing, uh, just incredible performances on the radio. I mean, uh, it's a great medium to, to learn how to tell great stories with and only using words and sounds. Tell, okay. tell us about the radio, the, the theater part. Maddie started the radio theater, but before you yeah. answer, go there, uh, Maddie, um, Jesus wants to know about uh, what does a podcast portfolio look like and is it saved just for audio? Hey, hey, Sus. Uh, hey, by the way, I just also want to throw it out there. I saw earlier that there were some folks that had podcasts. Um, I'd love to answer any of your questions. If you if you're getting stuck or have any anything that you you have a question about, um, you got me. Ask me now. Um, so a a, po a podcast portfolio is just like anything else. It's, it's what's your best work. Uh, for me, I'll be looking to see that you've worked on a a series, something that's that's been you know that not just one thing. You know, I want to make sure that you've done it. Um, you know, the number one question I ask anybody who applies for a job with me in anywhere I work is what did you do in college besides college? So um, I know you went to class. I know you got good grades, but what did you do outside of it? So showing somebody that, hey, not only was I in college, but I worked on a podcast the whole time. That shows me you're serious about being in this. Um, it shows me that you care. It's the same thing when I talk to people about um, about working at the college radio station. Uh, that shows me that you've actually, you, you're, you're passionate about it um, you, past just what you learned in class. So, you know, really showing me stuff that you've worked on besides what you did in school is, is, is important. Um, and then I see Colleen uh, asked uh, about monetizing your podcast. So there's a couple ways to monetize. Uh, the first is, and this is, you know, for uh, someone who's got a smaller audience, the best way is to maybe go out and find a sponsor. So, if you've got a podcast that is about, let's just say your podcast, I don't know what your podcast is about. If, if you could put that in the chat, I can give you a little more information, but finding, you know, finding uh, advertisers who want to talk just to that audience. So I have a friend that has a CrossFit podcast. It doesn't have a ton of listeners, about 10,000 a week, but he never has a lack of sponsorships because people that want to talk to people who do CrossFit know that his audience is all people who do CrossFit. So it's really easy for him to go sell a sponsorship. The other way we, we sell sponsorship is, is through advertising, which is um, there's a thing called uh, dynamic insertion where a company uh, like that we work with, they'll put in ads into our podcast for us. Um, and then we get paid per how many thousand people listen to the ad. So it's called a CPM, a cost per thousand. So um, that's, that's one way, but that's a, again, that's a harder way to make money. You have to have lots of listens to make money through that. Um, but finding, uh, so yours is strong women, strong stories, lifting up female entrepreneurs. Uh, you have a great hook there, female entrepreneurs. There are companies who want to talk to female entrepreneurs. So getting in front of them, telling them about your podcast and trying to see if they would want to sponsor the show is the best way to do it. I love that. I love that what you're doing. Your, your, your podcast is exactly what I'm talking about. You've got a very, I know who your audience is. All you had to do is write what you wrote. Strong women, strong stories, lifting up female entrepreneurs. That's a great mission statement. I know who your audience is. I know what your content should be. And I know what the podcast is about. So that's great. Earlier, earlier, Maddie, Mary said that she uses podcasts in her class as a teaching tool. 
and I thought, wow, what a clever idea to use a podcast in the class as a teaching tool. Your thoughts on that? Well, we not only in school, but you know, we 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 make them for companies. So a lot of people they don't want to read a big giant long memo from their boss. They much rather listen to a five minute podcast about something. Um, so podcasts are being used in all kinds of ways. Um, not only are they being used to promote companies on an outward basis, like I was saying with, you know, talking about making a, a travel podcast for a, a luggage company, but for making a podcast for your employees. So if I have a, a company that's got a thousand employees, um, I can make podcasts for them to listen to, to tell them about updates of the company, changes, things like that. They're becoming the new memo for a lot of companies. So, you know, again, it gets back to what I was saying about that empathy and education uh, that the podcast bring. Mary just uh, chimed in. She said, can you see that Maddie and her? Yeah. Team? I use them to interview guest speakers, like former students that have gone into marketing careers and tell us about what they do. That's great. Uh, again, that's, that's one of the, the great things about this, this medium is that uh, you can bring those conversations to folks and, and, and a lot of people rather listen to audio than, than especially now we we're on, I know for me, when I get done this Zoom today, I will have been on Zoom for uh, 14 hours. So uh, last thing I want to do is look at a screen. So <laughs> I'm happy to put on some headphones and listen to something. So, and, and you see that Lee Vidmar said he happens to be the editor of, of that podcast. Of a pod Which podcast, Lee? Tell us. I, Mary, Mary Ringstead. Can, can you see uh, Lee Vidmar? saying yep. it happened to be the editor okay you have uh, you get to do all the work that's great yeah oh mary's podcast okay all right so you know um we'll take a few last questions here and then um because maddie's been on 14 hours and <laughs> i didn't mean to i wasn't complaining i'm just <laughs> i don't think i'm alone i think most people are spending way too much time in front of know, computers well, right now this is, this is our life right now I mean, <laughs> but I, I will tell you this maddie and and for everybody listening you know, we said, oh my gosh, you know, Zoom fatigue, Zoom bomb, all that kind of stuff. But I would tell you, it is a very efficient way to reach a lot of people that people, a lot of people can join in and we can stay in the comfort of our own homes. Before, if you wanted to hear Maddie Stout talk about podcasts, you had to physically go somewhere, drive or walk in and take some time to get there, sit in an auditorium and, and then ask questions. I mean, it was a lot of effort for me. I think we've, you know, we've got to look at the silver lining of all that we learned through Zoom calls like this. It's really it's, it's also great for guests. So, you know, I do a podcast with someone who is in Houston. And if you listened, you would have no idea we're not in the same room because we both use the same microphone. Uh, we can see each other. We can go back and forth. Uh, it, it's wonderful. And and the Zoom technology is really caught up as far as sound quality goes. So we can get really good sound and quality uh, uh, recordings from it. So there's a lot of great things that have come out of us being forced to use this so much. Exactly. But, you know, between you and Steve, who are always, you're hounding me about my audio, I do use a microphone. Good. Because uh, Steve has noted that he did some research on Zoom fatigue. Do you know it's mostly caused by lack of good audio? That's why people get Zoom fatigue because you're struggling so hard to listen that it, it causes you to have more fatigue. So good audio, people, starts with a good microphone. Yes, I think we've got the same same one. Maddie. Just remember, talk into the blue light, Chan. Don't walk into the light. Talk into the light. Talk into the book. There you go. Anyway. <laughs> Um, other than, um, which one, okay. Colleen wants to know which mic do we have? This is the audio techniques 2020 USB mic. Um, they are available now during the pandemic. These sold out. I had to buy them wherever I could find them. So, uh, uh, they're available now, but, uh, during the pandemic, a lot of podcast equipment was sold out because everybody sitting at home decided that they wanted to start a podcast. So. Okay. With that, um, I think we want to thank everybody. Thank Maddie. Um, and then we want to toss it back to Hector. Um, Hector, we're going to toss the program back to you. All right. Well, hey, once again, uh, in the chat, for those of you that are still around, uh, big shout out to, uh, to the whole team 
Uh, obviously, Maddie's really uh, done a ton tonight here talking about podcasting, and I know I learned a lot. The funny thing about this, Maddie, was it kind of felt like I was listening to a podcast. So really easy to follow along with uh, you just <laughs> talking about podcasting tonight, which is really cool. I'm uh, a pro, shout-out. baby. You know, I... <laughs> The proof is in the pudding, man. You you knocked it out of the park as always. But no, it's 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 awesome to have you in it, and uh, it's just really cool. It's actually exciting. And uh, what were some of those podcasts you were mentioning? I forgot the name of the one you mentioned before that you said was a good one. But uh, I actually listened to that one, and I now I'm blanking on what it was called. Uh, Donnie Brasco or S Town? S Town. Now it's what you said early in the show. Joe Rogan. That- He's one that was of one of my top. first podcasts I ever listened to was the S-Town. That was interesting. Very but, good. Yeah. So, hey, for those of you that are out there, the last thing we wanted to sign off on was obviously we wanted to thank you for your time. But if there's anybody that's out there that's interested in looking into the university, uh, the main thing that we want to do is just make sure that you understand that the program that we have here, it's it's very well versed. Um, you know, par- podcasting is definitely a part of of this type of a program, but there are so many different avenues that you can get into in this school. Uh, So we just want to make sure that if there's anybody out there that's interested in looking at the university or you're trying to explore uh, pre-college level courses, undergraduate degree level courses, graduate courses, or just taking classes for fun, uh, just send me an email. I put my email out there. The first step would be just to connect with me so we can set up a one-on-one and just have a conversation about what it is you're looking to do. This way we can try to help you to get on your, uh, just get on your way and go in the right direction with something like this. So uh, what I wanted to do was just make sure to offer my time, uh, offer my energy. If there's anything I can do to help anybody out there explore this as an option, we're more than happy to do so. We have tons of different options. And also there's links and things that we can drop out there and information on financial aid, scholarships, whatever it may be. I'm more than happy to help you. Once again, just putting a couple links in here as well uh, for those students that are looking for just examples of student work, check out that spring show link and you can go ahead and just navigate over uh, to the School of Communications and we're gonna be able to show you some examples of really cool student work. Uh, For anybody out there that's looking for any upcoming events, go ahead and follow that link. Any students that are out there looking to apply to the university, here's a couple of links here as well, but I would really encourage you just to reach out to me uh, even before you do an application so we can have a good conversation uh, and we could take it from there. So, but anyway, thank you so much for those of you joining us tonight. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and end our event. I'll just hang back in the chat just for a couple of minutes here in case there's any last minute questions. Uh, but once again, big shout out to the online team, the marketing team for putting this all together. Thank you so much for your time tonight as well uh, to Judy uh, and Alex there behind the scenes. We have uh, Steve obviously here tonight, our co-director. Miss Jan, our director of our school here of communications, media technology. And last but not least, Mr. Matty Stout. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, I'll go ahead and hang back here on the recording in case there's any last minute questions. But if, uh, uh, if everybody else is good, we'll say good night. Thank you so much. All right, it looks like we're